being asked to prove that this piecewise function is a bijection, and we're also asked to find the inverse. So to show it's a bijection, we have to show that it's one to one and onto. So in this case, one to one means the following. For all x and y in the domain, which is the set of integers, whenever the outputs are the same, so whenever we have f of x equal to f of y, this should imply that x is equal to y. And we also have to show that it's onto or surjective. That means that for all little n in the codomain, which is the set of natural numbers, we can find some integer, say x, such that f takes little x and sends it to n. By the way, by the set of integers here, we mean all of the positive integers and zero as well. All right, let's go ahead and do the proof. So proof. We'll start by showing it is one to one. So claim f is one to one. So to show it's one to one, we have to assume that f of x is equal to f of y, and then we have to show that x is equal to y. So suppose f of x is equal to f of y for some x, y in the set of integers. And if we think about what f is and what it does to x, um, it might make this proof a little bit easier. So f takes x, and if x is positive, it sends it to an odd integer, or to an odd number, an odd natural number. And if x is less than or equal to 0, it sends it to an even integer. So saying f of x is equal to f of y, so this means that these guys, f of x and f of y, since they're equal, they're both going to be even or they're both going to be odd. So this means f of x, f of y are both even or both odd. Okay, if they're both even, so if they are both even, well, that means that f of x is equal to negative 2x. So this piece here is going to be negative 2x, and that's equal to, well, this piece here, which is negative 2y. And so x is equal to y. We just divide by negative 2. So we're done if they're both even. If they are both odd, then what does that mean? Let's see. So if they're both odd, we still have f of x equals f of y, but they're both odd. That means we look here. So f of x is 2x minus 1, and then f of y is 2y minus 1. This is pretty easy to solve. We add 1 to both sides, so we get 2x equals 2y. Hence, x equals y. So in any case, we have that x equals y, and so this shows f is 1 to 1. So this shows f is 1 to 1. So it's a 1 to 1 function. It is injective. Let's go ahead and do the next part. So for the next part, we're going to show that it's on to. So claim f is on to. So in other words, we're claiming it's a surjection. Let me go ahead and write down the function over here. We had f of x equals, and it was a piecewise function, and we said it was 2x minus 1 if x is positive, and it's the opposite of 2x if x is less than or equal to 0. So to show it's onto, so recall the definition of onto, in this case we have to show that for all little n in the codomain, there exists an x in the domain such that f takes little x to little n. That's what it means for a function to be on to, in particular for our function here in this problem. So we have to start by taking some n in the set of natural numbers. So suppose little n is a natural number. And as before, we'll take cases. We'll look at the case where little n is even and the case where little n is odd. So if little n is even, 
And here's where we have to do a, a little bit of thinking. So if little n is even, that means it needs to be equal to negative 2x. So you, we go to the side. This is scratch work. So we need little n to be equal to negative 2x. So we need negative 2x to equal little n. That means we need x to be equal to negative n over 2. Now n is even, so n over 2 is an integer because if n is even, it's divisible by 2, so n over 2 is okay. So if n is even, negative n over 2 is an integer, right? And since negative n over 2 is less than or equal to 0, when we look at f of negative n over 2, we use the second piece. So this is negative 2 times negative n over 2. These cancel, and negative and negative is positive, and so we get n. So we did have to figure it out before we chose it. So this is our x in this definition here. All right, now let's take the case if n is odd. So if n is odd, and now we need to find our x for the definition. So again, we'll go to the scratch work. And what we basically want to do is we want to be in this position here because little n is odd. So f of something needs to give us little n, which is odd. So little n has to be equal to 2x minus 1. So we set 2x minus 1 equal to little n. We add 1 to both sides. And so solving for x, we get x equals little n plus 1 over 2. Little n is odd, so n plus 1 is even, and so it's divisible by 2, so there's no issues here at all. So if n is odd, little n plus 1 over 2 is in fact an integer. And as before, let's notice the sign of n plus 1 over 2. So since n plus 1 over 2, well, this is positive, right? Because little n is a natural number, so even if it's, well, it's not 0. The smallest it can be is 1. So if it's 1, we get 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 over 2 is 1, and that's positive. So no problems there. So since it's positive, we're going to use the first piece. So then f of little n plus 1 over 2, this is 2 times little n plus 1 over 2. And then we have the minus 1. These 2's cancel, so we get n plus 1 minus 1. Boom, there it is. So in any case, we found an integer x such that f of little x goes to little n. This shows f is on 2. That was a lot harder than the first part. So this shows f is on 2. To finish, we're going to go ahead and find the inverse function. So let's, let's find the inverse. So let's do the second part of the question, which, oh, and since it's 1 to 1 and on 2, this shows f is bijective. So the proof, the proof is done. Let's, let's find the inverse. So little f of x is equal to, we said it was 2x minus 1 if x is greater than 0. And we also said it's minus 2x if x is less than or equal to 0. And so to find the inverse, we're just going to use like old school techniques from, I guess, other areas of math. So let's find the inverse for each piece. So for the top piece, to find the inverse, we'll just let y equal 2x minus 1. And then we'll solve for x. So when you solve for x, you add 1. And then you divide by 2. So x is equal to y plus 1 over 2. And then what you do is you switch the x's and y's. So y is equal to, and then x plus 1 over 2. So that's going to be the inverse for the top piece. For the bottom piece, as before, we just call this y. And then we solve for x. So we divide by negative 2. So x is equal to negative y over 2. And then we just switch the x and y. So y is equal to negative x over 2. So you just call it y, solve for x, switch the x and y. So the inverse function, it's a piecewise function. And we said for the top part, it's going to be x plus 1 over 2. x plus 1 over 2. 
and we'll deal with this in a minute. And then for the bottom part, we said it was going to be negative x over 2. Now, a function and its inverse swap domain and range. So the range here of this piece here is odd numbers. So in this case, x is odd because that this is this is specifying the domain for the inverse right this is the range this tells us that the range for this piece of f is odd so this becomes the domain of the inverse likewise here these guys are even right and they live in the range of f so this is going to go into the domain of the inverse it's a beautiful thing so in this case x is even and if you want to be more precise for odd we can say 1 3 etc and for even, we start at 0, so 0, 2, 4, etc. So I hope that made some sense. I kind of rushed the video, but uh, this was a harder problem. That's it.